today's Mass is offered for Passi Capazuto. As gold in the furnace, the Lord put his chosen to the test. As sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. And in due time, they will be honored. And grace and peace will be with the elect of God. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have made the blood of martyrs the seed of Christians, mercifully grant that the field which is your church watered by the blood shed by St. Charles Lawanga and his companions, may be fertile and always yield you an abundant harvest through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, <clears throat> I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from him, us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven.
The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you. When you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. This beautiful Gospel passage that we just heard happens at the end of the Gospel of John. This is how John Gospel concludes, in a sense. And we know that Peter had a great fear of the cross. We see this when we look back in the Gospel, when Jesus manifests himself, asking his apostles, asking Peter, who do people say that I am? Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say another prophet. Jesus asked them, who do you say that I am? Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Bingo, you know, Jesus makes him the first pope. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. But then Jesus goes on and describes what kind of death he would suffer that he must go into Jerusalem, be handed over to the chief priests and scribes and elders, and be crucified and put to death. On 
hearing this, Peter rebuked Jesus and said, Lord, God forbid this happen to you. And what did Jesus do? He rebuked Peter. He said, get behind me, Satan. Peter was afraid of the cross. And he was still afraid of the cross. And we see this fear that even after confessing his great love for Jesus and his faithfulness to Jesus at the Last Supper, that he would go with Jesus even to prison, even if it meant being put to death. Remember, Jesus, Peter confessed this to Jesus. And Jesus says, no, no. You will deny me three times before the cock crows. And that's what Peter did because of his fear, his fear of the cross, the fear of suffering, the fear of death. And so now we come to this scene sometime after the resurrection, another appearance of Jesus on the shore, and Peter sees the Lord, and he jumps out of the boat, and he comes to Jesus, and Jesus has prepared breakfast for them, and he brings them to bring all the fish ashore and to eat with him. And we see this beautiful moment of reconciliation. Now, if we were reading the Greek Septuagint Bible, if we were reading this passage in Greek, we would see that there is a deeper significance in the play of words here, particularly in the play of the word of love and how that is used, because in Greek there are three different kinds of love. In English, we just use one word for love. That's love. So in the Greek, Simon Peter at the Last Supper uses um, the, the greatest form of love, the self-sacrificial self love for Jesus. You know, I love you, Lord, and I will go even to prison with you. Even if they put you to death, I will go and die with you. He uses that kind of love. This is agape love, right? Okay. But now, when Jesus asks him three times, notice, he asks him three times, do you love me? Because three times Peter denied the Lord. And so this is a time of reconciliation. So Jesus asks Peter first, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Jesus uses that same form of love when he's speaking to Peter. Do you love me with that same agape love that you confessed at the Last Supper? You said that you confessed faithfully, you know, that you love me more than these. Do you still love me with that same love? And Peter replied, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. But in the Greek, he doesn't use that same agape, self-sacrificial self love. He uses philia. I love you like a buddy or a friend. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. Then Jesus asked him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Jesus doesn't use, he doesn't go back to the agape love. He's saying, Simon, son of John, do you love me with this filial love? This philia love? This, you know, like a buddy or a friend? Do you really love me in this way? And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you in this philia way. With this philia love. And Jesus says to him again, tend my sheep. And then Jesus said a third time to Peter, at which Peter was greatly distressed, because he said it a third time, the same number of times Peter denied the Lord. Do you love me? Do you really love me like a buddy or friend with the same philia love and not the agape love? that you confessed at the Last Supper. Yes, Lord, you know everything. I love you with this philia love, like a buddy or a friend. 
feed my sheep. You see, Peter was so distraught and guilty. He still had a lot of shame. And despite this beautiful reconciliation that Peter has with the Lord, he still has um, probably can't really trust himself that much. Probably can't trust what he says anymore or confesses to the Lord. And so he confesses Jesus, his love for Jesus, with that philia love, that kind of lesser love. But Jesus still embraces him, still forgives him, and still gives him and reminds him of his vocation as his vicar, and to feed his sheep, to tend his flock. And that by feeding them and by loving them, this fear within you, Peter, will be conquered and overcome. And then at the end of this beautiful dialogue, Jesus says, Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. What do you think Jesus is talking about? Remember Jesus, or Peter, was asked to come to Rome. This is, um, you know, the capital of the world, really. And Peter was hesitant. He did not want to go to Rome. And when he got to Rome, um, there's a lot of animosity towards the Christians. And there were persecutions going on. And when it got really bad, Peter fled Rome and took a group with him, a group of Christians. And while fleeing the city, there has in another um, historical writing in the uh, one of the Apocrypha Gospels that Peter actually encounters our Lord. He sees the Lord. The Lord appears to him again and Jesus is carrying his cross, going in the other direction back to Rome. And Peter says to him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus says, Peter, I must go back and be crucified again. Follow me. And Peter knew what that meant those words, to go and follow the Lord, to lay down his life for the church so that his blood could be the seed that gives life to the faith and the world, which it did. And Peter was faithful and overcame his fear of suffering and death and followed Jesus back to Rome to be crucified just like Jesus, but unworthy to be crucified in a manner like him. He chose to be crucified upside down and glorifying God with that beautiful death. Today, my brothers and sisters, we celebrate also um, the African martyrs, St. Charles, Luanga, and companions, who also follow Jesus fearlessly and faithlessly and, and faithfully to their death. And it is their blood, their witness, that is the seed of the faith. Wherever Christians were persecuted, wherever there are martyrs in the world, faith blossoms and springs up because the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the faith. And it's the Holy Spirit that they were filled with to help them overcome their fears to endure suffering, to endure death. And so as we approach Pentecost, let us pray and invoke the same Holy Spirit to fill us, to drive out all sin and fear in our lives so that we can faithfully follow Jesus fearlessly, proclaiming him, loving him, witnessing to him in the world.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, so become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you sacrifice, O Lord, humbly praying that as you granted the blessed martyrs grace to die rather than sin, so, may br- you, so you may bring us to minister at your altar in dedication to you alone. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours. Through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end, we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus. Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis nun celi et terra, gloria tua, osana in excelsis, benedictus, qui benit in nomine Domini, osana, in you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As a Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Agnus Dei, quid polis peccata mundi, 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his holy ones. Alleluia.
A prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have received this divine sacrament, O Lord, as we celebrate the victory of your holy martyrs. May what help them to endure torment, we pray, make us in the face of trials steadfast in faith and in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just want to wish all of you a good weekend, all right? The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. And Michael, we are protection against the wickedness and the snare from the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Regina Celi, Lepare, Alleluia. Quia clemeru isti portare, Alleluia. Resurrexi, sicutixi, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia.